Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua and I'm going to be your presenter today. We're here to talk about the new tax reporting features in Church Windows version 24. So even if you don't have Payroll 24 or Church Windows 24 installed, um, you're going to have it soon, okay, folks, because here's the bottom line. The old payroll, as we know it, the old payroll shortcut, as we can see here in the upper left of my desktop, my cursor's kind of going up there. That's no longer supported, okay? So we're not doing anything. No payrolls calculated in that. No tax documents are being generated from that. It's all being from the, done from the new payroll in version 24, okay? So, yeah, and we only have limited time here. So I'm basically going to be showing you the new Atrix interface with Church Windows payroll in here and we're going to probably be able to get through the 941 form if time warrants i'll try to show you the w2 but here's the thing folks this is a a really really wonderful new feature that we have added and you have to be confident enough to dive in and explore it and play with it okay as i've been telling folks here around the office you know if you can figure out a way to break it then we need to fix that okay so i'm encouraging each and every one of you to dive into this and play with this new tax reporting um, feature in the software. And there are a couple reasons why that's important, okay? Um, but basically from now on, from, from this point forward, from the release of version 24 and beyond, all of the payroll documentation, payroll tax reporting occurring is all gonna be occurring in the new payroll and through Atrix, okay? Go into under reports and export here at the top left and tax reports and choose tax forms, okay? Again, if you can break this and we need to figure out what broke it and how to fix it, okay? So that's where you're gonna access these forms from now on, okay? This is where all the tax reform forms are found and generated in church windows. If a particular form is unavailable, then Atrix doesn't have the form yet. We are no longer updating the forms. Atrix is doing all of this, okay? I think it's my understanding that they will begin electronic filing for, I think, W-2s as soon as January 6th, I believe the day is. But you can begin fi electronically filing your W-2 forms and W-3 forms with Atrix starting in the, after they right at the end of the first week of January, if you wish, okay? Um, so when we click on tax forms here in payroll, it does, it's now opening the actual Atrix interface, okay? So this is all information that is here being brought in from the Atrix system, okay? And I'm going to be kind of sitting on this page here for just a few minutes because there's a lot to talk about here, okay? So first of all, we notice there are several tabs across the top. Form selection, contact company info, designee, preparer information. There's not too terribly much on those others, but the big stuff is here under the form selection. If we notice here, we also have a button for federal and we have a button for state. Basically, this is, with Atrix now in church windows, your one-stop shop for all things tax documentation related. And I mean that for both federal, state, and local, okay? This is no joke. We've not been able to do this before, but you you can now not only generate your federal tax documentations and forms from church windows through Atrix, but you can also produce them for state and for even local um, local taxes and local taxing authorities, miscellaneous taxes, what have you. Okay, so when we're clicked on federal, we're now seeing all of the the forms that are available in this case for our year of 2022 at this time. Okay, so when a new form is released. Church Windows doesn't update that, Atrix does. You basically open this interface and that form is simply brought in here automatically by them. And you can see there's a whole slew of forms in here for 2022, okay? Notably things like your 1099 and your 941 forms and even down here further, your W2, W3, W, uh, the W4 form down here. So if it's not here, then Atrix doesn't have the available document in the software <clears throat> in their interface yet. They will get it there. And one of the things to keep in mind is, again, all of the available forms that you can file with them or print are available here, including 1099s, W2s, W3s, 941, et cetera, okay? 
If you're unsure, and if you notice here, we've got several 941 options. If you click on a particular form, document form, notice here we've got this section in the middle that says description of selected form. Okay, so it says, here I've chosen the 941 Schedule B, 941V, employer's quarterly federal tax return, use this report for quarterly, quarterly tax information, federal tax information, okay? So that's the form we're choosing. We do have, they do have the one here, we notice it says Puerto Rico, then another one for U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, American Samoa. So we, but so you pay attention to that description or selected forms. This is true on all elements or aspects of this. Next, make sure to pay attention to your year. You can produce and generate, regenerate forms for other prior payroll years here. Okay, this is really great stuff. And you're going to want to pay attention to your reporting period as well. Okay, so it says reporting period. It says any here in this case. But, you know, you might need to pay attention to that so you're looking at, you're choosing the correct reporting period. Okay. So here, because we're on our 941 form, it's also then going to require us to choose our respective quarter. And again, depending on the form, maybe your month and day. Okay. If we change the button up here to state, notice now my, our default withholding state that we've got set up in our system information is Ohio. But yours should pop up automatically too. And again, similarly, it will bring up um, other all the state forms that our Atrix has available for you um, or has available for your state, okay? And you might get a warning if you were trying to be able to choose something here that when you attempt to click print, it might pop up and say, okay, here's your tax periods. Uh, oh, it's doing it. <clears throat> okay, sorry. But it, you might get warnings, folks, about local taxes not having been set up correctly, okay? So if that's the case and you're unclear about what to do about that, then um, let us know, our technicians, myself included, are certainly happy and available to be able to answer those questions for you. Let me uh, close out of here and go back and reselect that. So we're not going to save those. But just pay attention to what the messages are telling you on the screens. Okay, we're going to go back to federal because I don't want to, I mean, we're about 10 minutes into this and we've got to get through the actual report generation process here. Okay. So we're going to go back down and choose our 941 Schedule B. Here again, we're, if I try to click next without choosing or print without choosing the quarter, notice it's barking at me here. It says, you got to choose a quarter. So we're going to go back. I, this is just training data, folks. You know, you're going to choose probably fourth quarter since you've already done first three quarters in the old payroll. You're going to do quarter four. But all that payroll data should be brought in exactly as it was. But I only have one or two quarters worth of data. So I'm going to backdate mine into quarter one. Okay. So if I choose quarter one, no month or day required, I now simply click print, okay? Then it pops up with the message we're used to, used to seeing, okay? Which it says, hey, here's what your deposits for the period are. Is this amount correct? Unless I know differently, I'm assuming that amount is right, okay? If I know that I've overpaid, like I've got, if I've got a monthly deposit schedule, which in this case, this amount would be, would, would, would require is a monthly depositor, Okay, I'm over $2,500, if I recall, that's what the limit is. So, but I've not made any deposits that are different, higher or lower from them than this. If they were, I would say no, and then it would prompt me to enter what I did deposit. But we're going to say yes. So now it's actually, again, opening up further information in the Atrix interface here. And as we saw in that other previous report that we saw for Ohio, now it's actually opening up the documentation here. There may be other screens that pop up and require that you register, you enter additional information. A screen that pops up and wants you to verify, say, your federal EIN number. Okay, just pay attention to what's on those screens. Okay, um, it, again, if you are unclear, either pick up the phone and call us, um, or you know, Atrix has support available for them too. Okay. But we notice here in the upper left, it says red fields must be filled in before continuing. But we're going to come to that. So this is something which comes up and, you know, folks kind of get a little worried about is it says the product is currently unregistered. Don't worry about this. A demo watermark will appear on reports and printouts. Don't worry. This is just an interface from the Atrix. Go ahead and click re register. And then when it pops up, just click done through the registration code, okay? That's all you do. It's, that's all it requires, okay? 
Now it's going to bring up our processing and report window. So it says, and you got folks, I can't stress this enough. Read these windows in these screens as they pop up if you're unclear. So in this case, it says look for instructions in the action toolbar at the top. Okay, fill out the required fields highlighted in red. And what that's basically saying is Atrix has built-in checks and balances in their system that allows you to avoid common pitfalls and file bad returns. Okay, so the, they've been doing this a really, really long time. And this is why we've taken them on and they've taken us on is because they can really, really help ensure that you're entering the proper information and filing the proper reports without mistakes when and wherever possible. Okay, so fill out the required fields highlighted in red, review the report for accuracy of values, blue fields may be deleted. And then it says my copy print for your records, you know, federal or state copy print an official federal or state copy mail it or simply click e file if you want to e file through those folks. Okay, so again, very helpful information field. We don't have to show this screen again if you don't want to. I would say don't check that box until you're confident with what their how their interface works. But we're going to click OK through it without that check. So it'll still continue to come, in, come up in future. And it reminds me again now, please complete required red fields information tab and information tab for next for next red field. So we click OK on that. And we notice here that when we do that, the first thing it does is it pops us down in here on page two, and it tells us on part two is we've got an overpayment. It's only 10 cents. But it says, what do you want to do? Do you want to apply it to your next return or do you want to send a refund? So you make the desired choice. You know, it certainly makes sense if you want to apply it to your next return. It's your choice. I'm not sure I want them to send me a, ten, a check for 10 cents. So I would probably choose apply it to my next return. Um, but then below that, notice now we have to check the, the box that best supports our deposit schedule. Okay. So if I recall correctly, we're monthly depositors and their system knows. So if it were less than $2,500 for my total deposits for the quarter or for the period, it won't even allow me to choose any of these other two options. It would only allow me to check the first box for essentially what would be a quarterly filer or a quarterly depositor. Okay, so we're going to choose now your monthly scheduler. Oh, he said, there it is. Okay, I don't know why I delayed. It does happen. So now notice it's now popped in with what each one of my month's deposits were, just like the old system did. Okay, and then when I'm ready to, okay, if when I'm ready here, I don't go up to print. I go right up here to the button, the little arrow down and right that says next step. Okay, so when I click on that, it then pops up with another information field that says, gives me again more information here. It says, this is your final opportunity to review or edit this report. Click double check to go back or print a review copy and check figures. Before you print or email, you must, you must recheck all figures which are included in this report. If there are any numbers that are incorrect, now is the time to fix them. Please click on agree button below if you agree if you have double checked or you can click to go back and double check it if you wish. OK, so you can do that. But we're going to, again, for time purposes on our webinar, we're just going to go ahead and click Agree. OK, because again, other screens are coming up. OK, so when we click Agree, OK, takes me back to my 941 form. I go up and I click Next Step again. And here's where it's now offering up something that you can purchase and, you know, you can e-file through Atrix if you wish don't have to do this, okay? If you want to e-file through them, you may certainly do that. I don't know what they are, but it looks like a 20% discount if you sign up today or when you do that, but we're going to not do that. We're going to simply close, okay? Now it's prompting us for our, do we want to e-file with Atrix or do we want to simply print our document, okay? So we're going to simply choose print. It now then opens up my printer properties allows me to choose my my default printer and send that to my printer uh, let me see here let me just choose one like print to PDF and I click OK and that would actually send that I fix physical printer okay so I've basically chosen that and then I'm going to cancel out of that once that's done now here's 
Yeah, it says could not stand. So now, okay, I don't, I'm not connected to a real printer here, folks, So, but it will. So it now prompts up and says, did you complete the processing for this report? So, of course, you know, you might want to hold off and wait till you grab the report off the printer. Looks right before you respond to this, because if you click no, it will allow you to go back and make further changes or, or what have you you need to the document, okay? Doesn't mean you can't go through this process again, okay? Um, but, and I'm going to show you how there's some information that's retained on this. So again, we're going to say, yes, we checked, grabbed it off our printer. It printed correctly. We're finished. So now notice it's now taken us back to our tax form page where, where we were, um, where we started the original um, preparation of the document, okay? So there's one reason why I'm really here to show you this, and this is really, really a wonderful new feature in this, is when you're done, is there is now a record of what we've done with regards to the processing of this document in payroll. And it's right here in the upper right under this button called History. So if I click on History, it takes a few seconds, just like it does, again, in Atrix, and it now opens up my list of I mean, and these are ones that I did either earlier today or yesterday, folks, that I saved these from when I was preparing for the webinar. So here's my Schedule B. So I can, you know, so the one I did Q1, okay, it doesn't give me a timestamp on it, but it should be the same information on all of them. And I can click on it, and I can either click View, Print, Edit, but I don't think it'll allow me to remove it. I don't think. If I try that, oh, it did. Okay, so it will allow me to. I couldn't do that yesterday. Oh, that case. So that's good that I did that. So we all learned something new about it today. Um, but I can simply highlight it if I need to reproduce this and reprint it, click view and print, and it reopens it where I left off in Atrix and allows me to print a new copy of it. Okay. So I can now go to next step or go right up here to print and print it if I wish. Okay. So that is true about all of the documents that you're doing through Atrix now. Okay. So any time you click, yes, the process, I, I'm finished with processing them in there, it will show up here under this history page, okay? And that's true about any prior years, too. So unlike the old payroll system that would certainly hang on to the data, the forms, the documents are all saved and preserved here for you, okay? So just keep in mind, there's, while there does appear to be some added complexity to this, there are a lot of benefits that come from that, okay, for you. Again, not only federal documentation, tax documents and forms, but state and local are available for printing and or e-filing through them as well. I don't know what their charges are, folks. We don't know what their expense costs are, <clears throat> but considering how, like, how easy and accessible it is for you, we think it's worthwhile that you certainly explore that with them and find out exactly, you know, what it might be worth for you to e-file with them, um, to how much it costs for you to e-file with them, but at whatever level you need to do it, okay? Um, so let me see here. Let me take a real, okay. So the final thing here is we're going to go about a minute long here, folks, on this is that the e-filing, uh, the ta Atrix is also now done in your accounting software the same way. So when you go into accounting and we open up accounting here and we go up to reports, tax, now notice it's opening the same Atrix interface here, okay? The only thing that we can print from accounting are the 1099s documents, but I'm just, you know, letting you know that you, if you still have the forms, you still need the forms for 1099s, but again, you won't, you'll print those from accounting, but it's all through the Atrix interface um, still, okay? Uh, so yes, the W-2s themselves, you can print the four up and the black and white copy to uh, plain paper. If you have the standard IRS format, you will need to get the forms, uh, but, and, but you will still need the actual 1099 forms and 1096, 1096 forms for your contractors, whether you're printing those through payroll for those folks or whether you're pr uh, printing them through the accounting software for them, okay? So... W-2s can be printed to plain paper, uh, 1099s, 1096 still require the, the actual forms, okay? So I'm sorry, we've gone a couple minutes long, but I, that's where I am going to leave our topic for today.